If you are a wedding or event professional, you know how important it is to get on the venue vendor list. This is one of the best ways to get referrals, to grow your business, and we talk about it all the time, right? But at the same time, it is pretty difficult. And for any of us new vendors who are coming into the industry, you know that breaking into the industry, getting on that vendor list is something that is pretty challenging. And so in today's video, we are going to be covering some of the best tactics to get on a venue's vendor list and ultimately grow your business through the relationships that you can build there. Uno, dos, tres. What's up guys, Jonathan here, and this is one of my favorite topics. You know, we manage currently several wedding venues in the Southern California area, and we have been a vendor that has been on venues vendor lists, and it is so important to be on a vendor list. I mean, we've built so much business off of the venue relationships that we have and the vendor list that we've been on, and for any of you new folks who are just getting into the industry or thinking about it, being on a venues vendor list is extremely important. And for all of my pros out there who know exactly what I'm talking about, you know how much business is directed your way when you are on that preferred vendor list, that recommended vendor list, whatever folks want to call it, you do end up getting quite a bit of business from venues when you're on that list. So I want to cover some ways that, you know, if you're new, if you're looking to get on new lists, very effective ways you could do that. I have six tips for you today. The last tip you're not going to want to miss because I think it it is dramatically undervalued. And I think that a lot of people, when they're thinking about getting on a vendor list, they're just very direct, right? They, they want to be on there. Maybe they show up at an open house or uh, maybe they get introduced to the venue, maybe online, and you know, you'll just have a cold reach out without developing a relationship. And this can be a huge turnoff to venues. I know now my company manages several venues, like I was saying, and we get those requests all the time. And it's kind of funny to see that happen at the several properties. Uh, it's just not a great look. It doesn't put a great taste in our mouth. And you know, of course we will maybe consider the vendor after that, but that's not a great first introduction or, you know, kind of way to develop a relationship. So today we're going to be going over that. I want to start with tip number one. Tip number one is to ask questions. Now you might be saying, Jonathan, what are you talking about? Asking questions. What do you mean? Well, ask questions of the venue, get to know the venue, get to know the venue owner, get to know the venue manager, get to know, you know, what they're struggling with, what they're dealing with. Ask those questions that are going to actually help you know more about the property. When you ask intentional questions, it unlocks all sorts of information for you that you can then use to be able to provide more value. Now, providing more value is that second tip. Tip number two, provide value first. You don't just want to roll up to a venue and say, hey, here I am. I'd like to be on the preferred vendor list. Can you add me? And you definitely don't want to do that after maybe attending just one wedding, even though you maybe are servicing a bride or groom at that wedding, even though you might feel like you did a very good job at that wedding, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have a relationship with the venue or venue owner or venue manager. So it's really, really important that you're using tip number one, right? Asking those questions to understand the needs of the property, the needs that commonly and currently exist there, and then how you can provide value, how you can solve those needs, how you can solve those problems. I found that when my company, when we did staffing before, when we were able to solve a problem that the venue had, and when we were able to provide that value first, the venue was much more likely to actually ask us to be on the vendor list list, right? They were approaching us saying, please be on the vendor list because we were solving a real problem. So that's tip number two, providing value first. Tip number three, and I already kind of mentioned this one is don't ask for it directly. I can't tell you how many times we get approached just, uh, you know, by people just saying, Hey, I'd like to be on your vendor list. You know, DJs do it. I've had florists do it. I've had caterers do it. We have two blank canvas venues. And then we have another venue that uh, we're pretty locked in on the list that we have just because of the preferences of the owner. It's interesting when you find some of those blank canvas venues, when you have other caterers that are added on. Yes, we do have a preferred vendor list, but just because you're working one wedding doesn't mean that we're going to add you on. And I know any of my venue owners out there as well, you know what I'm talking about. When a vendor just comes up and says, Hey, can I be put on the list? Well, the first thing you're thinking is, you know, no, I don't really know that much about you. You haven't developed that rapport with me. You haven't, you know, developed a relationship. You haven't asked any questions. You haven't provided value. You're just kind of shooting your shot. And as much as I love the boldness and the courage that that takes, that's not the right way to approach this. The best way you can approach this is, you know, if you aren't getting any traction with a specific venue that you would like to be considered for the vendor list, there are ways in roundabout ways to go about discussing application processes for being on the vendor list. You 
you can get to it in some other ways. But I'm gonna actually show you in these next few tips how you can actually do things where you will be reached out to by the venue because they want to add you onto that list. And it is much better to be invited or just added to the vendor list without actually needing to kind of pitch yourself in that very uh, straightforward way. Tip number five, and this is a super, super important one that really is a good follow up to tip number four. Don't just ask for it, right? We covered that in tip number four. Step number five, actually develop a real relationship. Like I said, ask questions, you know, get to know them as people, get to know what they actually are struggling with as a business, get to know all of the different facets of, you know, what they're dealing with. And even on a personal level, I would say, take this to the next level. Don't just focus specifically on their business, but understand if there's a venue manager there and maybe you have some things in common, maybe you're both dog lovers, or, you know, maybe you have kids or maybe, you know, there's all sorts of similarities and things that exist and finding that common ground is really, really important to develop a relationship. So when you do that, when you have the opportunities, when you have networking meetings, when you have, uh, when you're, you're looking at a venue that you'd like to be on the list, whether that's on Instagram or whatever, do a little bit of research around the person who's actually making the decision about those folks on the vendor list and actually take a genuine interest in their life. You know, see if there's maybe a way that you can provide some value that's maybe not necessarily just related to weddings or events. Maybe you find out that they love muffins or cookies you know, maybe they find you find out that they want to do a uh, styled shoot and they're missing a vendor and maybe that vendor is not you, but you can refer somebody. So there's so many different ways that you can actually add value, whether that's professionally or you know more on a personal level. Both those things will allow you to develop that personal relationship and start developing rapport. And that is one of the things that I think you can do and that makes the biggest difference really. You know, when you are top of mind, when in that person's mind, that venue manager's mind, that venue owner's mind, you are top of mind and they're considering you because you've been there, you've showed up a couple of times, you know, that for me makes the biggest difference. I've seen that work at so many of our venues with our venue managers that we put in place, you know, for vendors that are there, they're showing up, they're serving, they're giving, we want to add them onto the list. And so uh, that I think is one of the biggest tips. Now, step number six is not only going to help you get added to lists, but it's going to save you a lot of trouble, a lot of headache and a lot of time. You're not going to want to miss it. Step number six is to know your target market. I got to say that again, know your target market. And why this is so important is if you go out and you see this beautiful venue and you're really excited, you want to get on the list, you want that business that's going to come from being on that list. And you know, you know, some of the other vendors maybe, and you're, you're pushing because you want to be on that list. And so you're going out, you're providing value, you know, you're doing research, you're asking questions, you're showing up to the different networking meetings that might happen there. You're volunteering to do stuff for a style shoot or whatever, right? And you're really working hard. And then you get added to that list but your target client doesn't actually get married there, you are going to be wasting so much time. And I've done this before, right? I've done this and I've seen this happen to other vendors at our properties, right? The vendor will work very hard to be on our list and we appreciate it, we love it, so we add them to the list. And what ends up happening is because they aren't our target client, they aren't our target couple's you know, choice, they end up not getting the business. So they spend all this time trying to build rapport with us and while that's great, they really aren't getting the return for their efforts, for their money, for their expense and all of that. And so, you know, if you are a vendor out there, you're looking to be added to a vendor list, I would say, make sure that you know the types of couples that are going to be getting married at that venue. And you can do that by doing some simple research, search hashtags, search the account, just see what people are posting and kind of do a little bit of, you know, putting a puzzle together, right? Of figuring out what types of couples generally get married at this venue. And then if you know your market and if you know your services and you know exactly what you do and you know that you can provide incredible value and services to those couples in whatever category it is, maybe it's photography, florals, DJs, catering, stationary. I mean, there's so many different things you can do, but if you understand the profile of the target couple who gets married at that venue, you will have so much of a better payoff for all of the work that you're doing with the previous five tips that I just gave you. So I hope this has helped. If you are struggling with getting on a vendor list, please reach out, drop a comment below. I'd love to talk to you about it, give you kind of some insight. Like I said, we do manage several different venues and we have had a lot of pros on this podcast that we do also. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, please check that out. It's on YouTube and on podcast platforms everywhere. But I am looking for someone actually to do a show all about 
how to get on a vendor list correctly and to maybe even cover some of these same tips that we covered today. So hope you've enjoyed the show. We will see you in the next episode.